Okay. All right. Vic is lonely boy, and I am birthday boy. What do you want to be? Um, um, lonely birthday boy. <laughs> lonely birthday boy. <laughs> I don't know. And. And. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Take monsters to prom. Perfect. And then change it to regular monster. Monster prom. prom one. Okay. So can you guess what the concept of this game is? Is it prom for monsters? Yeah. yeah. No way. Oh my god, that's Araka. Oh. Oh. Arava. Arava. I can't. Okay, three, three players. players. Should we do Same. DLC? DLC, because that okay. is calculus right now. All right, uh, short okay. game. Yeah. Ah, spooky high school. <laughs> Sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and... Did I confirm that? I'm going to double check. Okay. We were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. How are we going to get our missing on this? I don't know. <laughs> We might have to move it to the living room. We might. I think okay. it would be better when Artemis is here. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. So you can pick first. Um, you I'll get be to the be fire girl. Yeah. Okay, good. We don't have to change our characters. Good. She pronouns okay. and what's your name? Do you um, want you Red can... Amira Custom. Uh, oh. Custom. Um, Do you want to be Alita? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, do you want to be two? I'll be two. I want to be green and I want to be Lucas. Oh, you sure you don't want to be wrong, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to be wrong, baby. Do you want to be wrong, baby? No, I'm not going to be wrong, baby, again. <laughs> Slick. <laughs> I can do this. Perfect. We had yet to experience the ultimate challenge, the monster prom. Pick who you want from these weird sprites now before I introduce them properly. Just based on like all of these. Just vibes. Just vibes. I want to be this one. Uh, like date. Oh, I want to date that one. Okay. <laughs> Love Polly. Okay. Scott Howell, 21. A werewolf at athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly large heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Polly Geist, <laughs> a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damien LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire and a very good sprite. I love that one so much. It's because he got tummy. He got tummy. Liam Delancourt. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact that he was truly a lovable dork. Ooh, maybe I date him. Ooh. Zoe. <laughs> an eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl. Calcu Lester Hewlett Packard version 1.0. <sighs> a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vera Oberlin. <laughs> a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? Because we all get to choose. Anyone. We all get to choose someone. <sighs> two weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had two cho two weeks to choose to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. All right. Oh, <gasps> Mako started eating me, but it's okay. Aww. You want to eat me, Mako? Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, we'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. <clears throat> An alien race invades Earth, and they tell you that the world's fate depends on how you answer the following question. How do you like your coffee? Alien friendly. My favorite type of coffee this is one. vodka. I like my coffee as dark and as bitter as my own soul. Which isn't bitter or dark at all. I'm a pretty nice person. That one? Perfect. Yes. What did you want? Uh, vodka. 
And then I wanted this one. A radioactive possum just bit you. What superpower did you get? The superpower of always choosing the right combination of emojis to get the desired reaction from all people. So you see my loved ones, ones, burning my enemies, settling any argument, and, any, and even conveying complex emotional thoughts. Uh, probably rabies? I'd go to the hospital immediately. Or the incredible power of writing fanfiction so compelling that the actual creators of the TV shows decide to go with my ideas in crazy ships. Probably the middle one. <laughs> Uh, top one. Okay. I'm so charming. You're so charming. <laughs> if you were a product, what would be your slogan? Buy me. I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> Extra flammable. That is perfect for my character, but actually, just who you <laughs> are. Um, this one. Be ready for a long trip together. Aww. That's you. Yeah. Um, ex extra flammable. <laughs> Buy me. I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> uh. Buy me, I'm good? Oh, Ooh, you got heart from Polly. What criteria would you use to name your children? I'll research for a name that is pun proof and joke proof. No one will pick on them. Child plus current version based on birth order. <laughs> Yeah. A non-heteronormative name to give them freedom to define themselves in their own terms. My name plus the second. <laughs> Meh, no name, it's just too much work. Or the name of my favorite ship, like Galavik, Dare, or Nerfield. Uh, I might go for Zoe this time. Yeah. Probably this one. Non-heteronormative name. Uh, no name, it's too much work. <laughs> yes, I got Zoe. Ooh. Okay, so that gave us a bit of bonus attraction with people. Uh, you Let's got Polly this. and Liam as, like, your first, like, bonus attractions. Yay. Now you have lots of stats. I also need to move chat. Oh, right. Which no one's using, but still. Eh, it's fine. There are lots of stats, and they correspond with different people. <clears throat> so... You have 10 smarts, 4 boldness, 4 creativity, 7 charm, 4 fun, and 5 money. <laughs> so you can get more money up here. You can get more creative over there. Fun, smarts, charm, bold. Yeah, I don't have to go to school. I'm smart. <laughs> uh, so what do you think Polly would be interested in? She's a party girl. Um, probably fun. Do you want to go have fun? Yeah. Ooh! Ooh! That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rap party. You gain plus two fun. Yay! You notice Liam and Polly taking a break from the rave. You dance over to join them. Hey, boo! Alright, I got my Polly voice. Do you want to do Liam or do you want to have Liam? Lita, do Liam. Lita, do Liam. Do you want to do Liam? Sure. <laughs> Yo, we were just talking about the insane music festival that we're going to this weekend. You're going, right? Shit, you <laughs> forgot to get tickets. <laughs> They're probably all sold out now, and there's no way you can afford to pay a scalper. Obviously, you tell them you're going, though. You've never let the, the truth get in the way of talking to hotties. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. All my favorite bands are going to be there. Boo Radley, Imagine a Fucking Dragon, and Actual Dead Mouse. <laughs> Personally, I'm most excited about <laughs> Veggie Scales. Their lead guitarist is a cucumber. It's never been done before. Oh, how? What was her voice? It was like kind of valley girlish. It was. I was trying to go for like high up, like kind of like preppy, but then it became valley girl. Yeah. And totally, valley girl is po is Polly. So. I changed my mind. I want to date that guy. You want Liam? Liam? Yeah, I like Veggie Scales. <laughs> of whatever it's called. <laughs> Hello, friends. What are we talking about? Is it a grand ball? Oh, um, sort of. It's like a grand ball, except everyone is more naked and the dancing is sexier and there are a lot of drugs. <laughs> what is drugs? <laughs> you know what? You wouldn't understand. It's a peasant thing. <laughs> no, wait, this is perfect. If you can convince Liam and Polly to invite Miranda to the music festival, maybe she'll cover your ticket, too. If a party happens in the forest and there are no party virgins to be bewildered by it, is it really a party? 
Or, you know, guys, if we bring Miranda, her royal status will give us diplomatic immunity. Top one. You're so charming. Well, neither of us are virgins. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Being a virgin is so last century. <laughs> Wait, he's blushing! <laughs> I love him. God. You know what that means, Liam? <laughs> that we should hope being a virgin doesn't become cool again since we have to come up with a way to re-virgin ourselves. <laughs> what? No, I mean, it's a, it, I mean, it means that we're taking Miranda to the festival. Hooray, I'm overjoyed, despite still not knowing what it is we're doing. Yes, of course. I can't wait to teach her how to complain about the sound of mixing and lineup. And I can't wait to tell her, a, to show her the molly pit. <laughs> Don't you mean the mosh pit? Aw, oh, Liam, sometimes you're cute. <laughs> Ew, she, why is she flirting with my man? How dare she? <laughs> you all ditch the rest of your classes to explain music festivals to Miranda. It takes eight hours, 12 diagrams, and an elaborate puppet show, but she's finally ready to party. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. So you gain four fun and one creativity from this encounter. Um, wow. Sure. Oh, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. And Damien shows up. Oh, Polly! Oh, wow. Hi, Polly. Later, you see that Polly is even more excited than usual, and you decide to see what's going on. You know, oh my god! That's so cute! You Aww. know, I've been doing a lot of soul-searching recently. <laughs> Get it? And I think I finally figured it out. Who I really am. I mean, my soul emoji. The emoji that speaks the truth of my soul! <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would say I'm like the winking ghost emoji or the paella emoji, but those are just who I am on the outside, you know? My real soul emoji is the pink heart with a blue arrow through it. It's like, I'm sweet, right? But I've also got a dark side. Plus an arrow through the heart is how I was killed. <laughs> what about you? What's your soul emoji? Pink over the ribbon around it because you're right next to yours in the selection menu. <laughs> My soul emoji is an air horn. Loud, Loud and, and proud, proud and, and big, big into hip hop. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. <laughs> Air horn? That's a great choice. Man, I love when I'm listening to a sick pop song and all of a sudden, air horn, air horn, air horn, it really keeps the party going. We should hang out more. If you're anything like an air horn, I bet you'd never get annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're air horn funny, which is a good thing. You gain two, and, two, far, two fun and one charm. Good for me. All right. Oh god, I have to pick what... Uh, what is Zoe? I'm googling Zoe's stats. I know creativity. Yeah, creativity, ab but absolutely. I don't know the second one. I'm gonna say creativity. <gasps> that day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a fur figurative blowjob. <laughs> Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. Having stretched, kicked your faces, and belted for the gods, it's time to get down to business. Rehearsing the classic musical, Anti-Mame. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> and now, Princess Tortellini, my sweet damsel in distress, prepare to die! Can we hold, please? Dude, why would you interrupt me? I was in the moment, like I was, like I was fucking Meister. <laughs> Rump. I fail to see how oh. having intercourse with Meisner would improve. Oh my god, she's autistic too. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking was a descriptor, Miranda. Can I please say my goddamn lines? I mean, you could, but don't you want this musical to be better? <gasps> Auntie Mame, an evil dark knight, being a bad guy? It's so predictable, right? Aren't we, aren't we all about inverting tropes at Spooky High? Hmm, it does seem that the leading lady role is somewhat outdated. Here we are in the modern age, and some of her reactions to male violence could be taken straight from fake horses going up and down in a circle. Horse Plinko? <laughs> <laughs> oh, merry-go-round! <laughs> oh, <laughs> fine, whatever. If my brilliant and hair-raising portrayal of Auntie Mame isn't good enough for you, then go ahead and think of an awesome plot twist, and I'll nail that too. Under his mask. He is blushing! <laughs> it is creativity. Creativity and charm. Oh, okay. 
Okay, we did a short game, right? Yeah. Nine and six. Okay. Oh. <sighs> right as Auntie Mame's about to slay the princess, it's revealed he never got his Dark Knight license and can't practice the trade, at which point the play turns into a complex and exciting adventure in bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Auntie Mame's not a Dark Knight at all, but an undercover cop who's spent the last 20 years working from within the villain system to dismantle the whole operation. Ah. Oh. oh, I love it! <laughs> oh man, an undercover cop? That's so fucking metal, man. What is, what's your ring? I'm so fascinated. I got it today. It was a birthday Whoa, gift. Oh, it was. Cool. That's amazing. This is like his dick. Oh my god. No way. <laughs> and then it's like, once Auntie Mame comes out of the deep cut where he's just like, I don't even know who I am anymore, man. I've been a dark knight so long that I don't recognize myself out of the armor. Daddy always says that the bureaucracy is an excellent tool for the destruction of the massive spirits. Wow, she's wearing a Princess Daisy outfit. Good <laughs> for her. And he just wakes up in the middle of the night screaming about eldritch curses. I love it. Oh my Whoa. god. I think we have a hit on our hands. Man, you guys, this fucking job, all I know anymore are lances and potions. Dope. Being a playwright is easy as fuck, apparently. Way to gain two smarts and one fun, my creative friend. Alright. Choose a part of your body. Dick. Ah, so oh, damn it! I was gonna say dick! <laughs> Hole. <laughs> Hole. What's your hand? Okay. Yeah, we know you probably wouldn't eat another human being, but provided you're forced to do so, where is the sign on which part of the body you would most likely eat? Well, <laughs> Hole! Hole! I'm really glad I didn't say feet. I almost said feet. Hole, dick, hand. Hole, dick, hand. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, okay, now we get to pick who we sit next to at lunch. This is the shop, by the way. Okay, um... Uh, you're wanting to go for Liam, right? Yeah. Okay, I will keep this seat open for you. I'll go talk to... I'll go buy oh, something. right, because you're going for Zoe. I was going for Zoe, but I will... Show me for the money. shop. Shouldn't you be out there trying to romance a classmate or something? Anyway, welcome. Oh, should I buy the corpse guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It's not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. Corpse real? It's a real corpse. Uh, now I gotta look up the... Later, Gator. The corpse is involved in the interdimensional prince, so I might need to look it up. I'm always amazed at how people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. Intriguing. Um, okay. Sure. Hmm. Hmm. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of Spooky National Bank uh, made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. Alright, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. <laughs> Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? <sighs> because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points at a kosher dill pickle, placed in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the police ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head, he never sleeps, and never takes- doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up! We need to find a way around him! Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, Lucas, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind, but before Vera or Damien can react, you rob the bank yourself and split the money with Vera. Eat the bank. Quick as a flash, you snatch the pickle off the table and bite it in half. Yes! Success! Suck it, ogre! That doesn't actually solve the- Look, Vera! Now the path to the vault is clear. We can blow it open and walk out with the cash! But the ogre's still there! The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no <laughs> ogre. Fine! Why don't you two just rob the bank then? I'll focus on my illegal drug trade. You're happy to share a romantic heist with Damien. Together, you eat the actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. And everyone knows that police ogres are the ultimate aphrodisiac. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. Now you want to sit with 
Liam? I thought you were gonna go sit with Polly I after I spent five dollars on a corpse. <laughs> In a totally normal way, Liam happens to sit down at the same lunch table as the coven. As the coven. 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 Suddenly, you hear a loud gasp from across the cafeteria. Every single one of Zoe's mouths is hanging open. You pull up a chair right as Zoe rushes over. O M G. Whoa! Is that what I think it is? Liam and the Coven sitting together? Do I smell a fifth season revival? Drop it. By the way, there are only three seasons. Fall, winter, and eternal contemplation of the void. <laughs> OMG, this is totally the classic return to a long-lost ally to save the world once again. Or maybe there's still some fire between Liam and Joy? Ooh. <laughs> Do you know anything about boundaries? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, just like hot. real fangirls. Listen, yep. we're no longer allies, but that doesn't mean we can't sit at the same table or anything. It is literally just a lunch table. Just a flat piece of wood with four legs. It means nothing. Quick, use your boundless compassion and wisdom to mediate this minor dispute between your friends. <laughs> That's exactly what someone would say if they were hiding a secret double-crossing mid-season reveal alliance romance, or I think we're missing the real chemistry here. That lunch table is giving serious fuck-me eyes to the <laughs> cafeteria floor. <laughs> Liam liked that. Holy shit, you're right. Lunch table and cafeteria floor have some close contact going on right now. Oh, stop it. I'm never going to fall for that. You take a bite of your sandwich and trip a... a and a drip of ghost mayonnaise hits the leg of the table. It slowly drips down to the floor. The oh floor and the god. table both look immensely <laughs> satisfied. Oh god. <laughs> okay, fine. I ship it. <laughs> oh, I hated that. Zoe's distracted by the table X floor hotness, which means she's no longer bugging Liam. He is silently co contented. Nobody learned anything or grew at all as a person, but who cares? You're just here to hook up with sexy monsters and watch the cafeteria put the table and pregnant the floor. Oh, God! Why? The top is a bottom! Or the floor is a bottom! <laughs> the top is a bottom. Uh, uh, choose an occupation. Uh, accountant? That's what I picked last time. Uh, 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 animator. janitor America's next janitor America's next accountant America's next what did you say? Uh, animator. animator all of these are mine is the least funny America's next janitor is kind America's of funny. Is pretty I think funny. America's next janitor is the funniest and then America's next accountant and then I go third because I'm a stupid loser you're not stupid or a loser thanks alright all right. Go to the shop again. Refund my phone. <laughs> oh, I also can't make more money because that's where you make money. How would what? This one's me. Okay. Creativity. I need more creativity. Really bad. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you are struck up struck by lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. Wrong baby. You tell her when to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. Oh, no. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. <laughs> Quite the feat, you gain too much creativity. We, the devs, dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. Wrong baby. <laughs> Wrong baby. <laughs> While doing all that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it was a normal thing to do. <laughs> But some people didn't seem to think otherwise. Oh no, it's the four most hateful people in school, and they're wearing their outfits for being here! Ooh. Yay. Okay. Ugh. Why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? <laughs> what a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> ha, yeah, what a noob. Carrying around corpses is for noobs. <sighs> oh, corpse! I love corpses! Also, I'm super drunk. Okay, the three most hateful people in school and Polly. <laughs> As the school's social elite, we disapprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy, and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I'm the taste of the hierarchy, and I don't appreciate such pure evil use of a corpse. Also, lesser known fact about corpses, they smell. 
I'm the fists of the hierarchy, and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. Hi. I'm Polly, and also I'm like super drunk, so whatever Vera says. Yikes, despite your disregard for stupid social conventions and social school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe because that's what this game is about. When you bought this corpse, Valerie told you it was, to it was a fashion accessory and that she was absolutely not just trying to dispose of a body. But now you're starting to feel she might have fooled you. No time to lose. How do you convince them the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? Uh, most of them are wearing on your head. Quick, put the corpse on your head. Uh, so shallow social creatures respond only to status. Rip the brand logo off of the most high-end accessory you own and put it on the corpse. I think the second one. I don't really know what you're going for, though. Well, what, what, what stats do I have? I like that you have zero money. I do have zero money. And also ah, an icon or a corpse. Uh, in one of the runs, I bought a used tampon, and I just had that for the whole game. It did Ew. not help at all. <laughs> it didn't do anything except take a dollar away from me. Yeah. Oh. And... <laughs> Wait, look. The corpse is actually a, a burger, burger queen. <laughs> Damn, you're so poor. Your best piece of clothing is actually the paper bag from a fast food chain. You sometimes use a hat. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so you were going to eat this corpse? Ugh, disgusting. Fast food companies, am I right? They're always finding new lows. Give me that. Damien <laughs> takes your corpse and bites its arm. He chews for a while. <laughs> you're completely right. It is disgusting. No seasoning and super dry. Then it's not even gluten free. So immoral. I always expected Vic was it was into fast food and necrophagia. You have poor eating habits written all over your face. <laughs> Still drunk. <laughs> and so they leave you alone with your corpse. This is the worst day ever. Also, Damien was right. The corpse is kind of under seasoned and dried. You lose two fun and one charm. Sucks to be you. Oh man, what do I need? Um, oh, uh, there you go. Smart. And Maybe boldness. If you're going for Liam, you definitely need smarts, but I don't know what his secondary would be. Oh yeah, I, I have smarts. Wait, it might be. Oh, I thought ten was the max, but it's not. No, it goes up. Nice. Are you gonna Google Liam or am I Googling Liam? I'm Googling it. Smarts and creativity. Hmm. I don't know how much it Well, means, I'm using creativity, so you might want to get smarts. Okay. <laughs> that day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this school. You gain two smarts. But Liam isn't paying attention to any of that. He corners you afterwards to lecture you on momentogram filters. <laughs> What no one seems to understand about filters is that they're not about making pictures better. <laughs> they're about making pictures browner and harder to see. <laughs> That's why I use my own proprietary filter for almost all my photos. Infinite taupe. taupe. It's also probably why I have only six momentogram followers, <laughs> but me, we must all make sacrifices for our art. In any case, I have to go. There's a dead rat in the parking lot. I simply must document. Holy shit. I think I love Liam, actually. <laughs> as soon as Liam's gone, Miranda peeks out of an air conditioning duct. Oh. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. It's fine. Goodness, the situation's even more dire than I thought. If Operation Make Liam Popular Again is to succeed, we must get started immediately. What's that? Why, yes, of course you're part of my operation. I will unwillingly force people into my service all the time. Oh, you know why, why I know why it's called Operation Make Liam Popular again? Well, he's been alive for like centuries, right? I'm sure he must have been popular at some point. I'll check the history books later. There's no time now. Phase one is getting Liam more momentogram followers. I took the liberty of having my royal spies discover the password to his account so we can give it a total makeover. But what to do? <laughs> Let's do the top one. I love it. What is oh. porn? Never mind. 
If you suggested it, it must be something very classy and suitable. <laughs> I shall put you in charge of curation. Port away, comrade! <laughs> You turn Liam's account into Momentigram's number one resource for weird dicks and domestic terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> Shockingly, this turns out fine. There you are. I wanted to share the great news. I'm Momentigram infamous. Apparently, my filter game was so edgy that the backwards administration decided to close my account. Huh? But not before I amassed over three million followers, and they're all following me to my new website. HotLiamPicks.com <laughs> Of course, I'm utterly devastated that my work has become mainstream. Yes, this is the worst, and I am not at all happy or excited about it. Anyway, I have to go take pictures of my lunch. My fans are waiting. It's evening. You're not sure they're waiting for what Liam thinks they're waiting for, but whatever works, right? You gain two creativity and one charm. Um, sure. Small bladder. <laughs> Small bladder. <laughs> I already read this. I don't read feel this like already. It. You're just getting ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, baby, let's party. Does the game think you're romancing Polly? I guess. How can you refuse such formal missive? You you track her down immediately. Hi. Hey, you got my text. That's good because I need some help brainstorming. I'm going to a party tonight, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame, and that needs to change. See, it's a costume party. You know where everyone dresses up as their favorite humans? <laughs> I'm going as a sexy tax attorney. That's me! <laughs> I'm not sure even the sexiest tax attorney can res rescue this party from the depths of lameitude. So, got any idea to help spice things up? Oh, you've got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. Spike the punch with mandrake root, and turn monsters into actual humor. Okay, you go as a sexy tax attorney. I'll go as a sexy tax evader. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Later that night, you're hanging out at the party and waiting for Polly wearing a shirt that says, I have unpaid taxes. <laughs> when suddenly you hear a booming voice from the door. Halt, tax, tax evader! evader! <laughs> you turn around expecting to see Polly with her sexy vest and pocket calculator, but it's actually a grizzled tyrannosaur in the business suit from the Department of Monstrous Revenue. As you flee the scene, you see Polly about to put on a lab coat and goggles. Hey, why are you running? Why are you wearing that shirt? Oh, did you think I was actually going to be a sexy tax attorney? I was super high when I said that. I'm actually just a sexy chemist. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need a regular chemist after beating, after the beating that Tyrannosaurus gives you. You lose two money in one boldness. And stole no. your money? Yeah. Oh, who gets a thing? Yeah. Lita! What happened to you, Lita? Let's do this. What's a rad monster to do on the weekends? Only hang out with the absolute raddest gals. In the absolute raddest place, the glorious mansion belonging to your dear spooky high friend, Juan the Small Magical Latino Cat. Look at our little outfit. But alas, even the best parties wind down eventually. She actually looks great. I actually do really like her shirt. Lame. Man, this party was a, <clears throat> this party was the best of parties, but it seems like it's winding down. Oh god, I actually voice all three of these. This is gonna <laughs> yeah, swapping yeah. between these is gonna suck. Okay, <laughs> seems like it's winding down. Yeah, and I feel the frenetic party chaos joy energy fading off of pretty much everyone at this point. Uh, I think I'll head out and head out and head out and head out if we're counting the snakes. <laughs> I can't imagine anything else exciting is gonna happen here. Hello? Hi! How have I not seen you <laughs> until Hello. now? Hey. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's Dimitri! Oh, her face. And Dimitri's eyes, and Dimitri's hair, and Dimitri's abs! His abs. I see this pitiful party is fading into mundane nothingness. As you all will, too. Unless you join me on the dark side to bring chaos and destruction of down upon civilization. In which case, the stories of our dark, dark deeds and dark, dark souls will live on forever. Yes! I mean, I'm already dead, but yeah, that sounds kind of dope. This party's a bust now, so... Mm. I could dig it. I'm pretty sure there's a profit to be made in chaos. Zoe? Abs! Ah, oh, shit. Seems like your friends are down for just about anything when they're bored, including bringing destruction down upon the world. 
Time to revive this party and keep your friends from being swayed by sexy, sexy Dimitri. By using an ultimate DJ strategy that will bring everybody's attention away from Dimitri's abs and back onto the side of the right. Of right. <laughs> But of course, the level of masterful complex DJing you intend to do can't be done by the hands of one mere monster. You need your most trusted friend, the ultimate DJ partner, someone touched with consent by the god of party. <laughs> oh god. Which one are you choosing? Me or Vic? It gives us points with whoever we're romancing. Oh, who is- which of you is closer to romancing who you want to romance? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. Because <laughs> the game decided that I had to romance Polly, which was not what I was intending to do. Oh, well, let's not give you points towards Polly. I'll choose Vic. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Damn it! Well, you don't need fun for Zoe. Oh. No, but that means that I failed because I'm not so fun. But you don't need fun. But it means I failed the interaction. Yeah. <sighs> Frankly, was not only only not at Juan the small magical Latino cat's rad party in the first place because he was already going doing rad DJ work over at Juan the tall mundane Jewish goblin's place. <laughs> <laughs> but Vic is a badass friend, and over at at the smaller magical -er, Juan's place in no time with all of his sick DJ tools in tow. Psst, if the other party was so much better, why didn't you just stay there? Yeah, Vic, you're blocking my view of Dimitri's abs. Yes, move so everyone can see my abs, and then join me in my quest to bring destruction. But you and Vic are undeterred, probably because you know it's time to show off Vic's incredibly unique and avant-garde form of DJing, sure to shock and impress everyone. I hate to be that girl, but Vic is just throwing hammers at the audience. <laughs> Yep, he sure is! This is not improving the party at all. Ouch, one of those hammers just hit me in the head. I swear if one of my snakes chipped a tooth. Quick, let's get out of here before someone damages something, like Dimitri's abs, or a vase, or Dimitri's abs. I don't know. Damn it, Vic! Throwing hammers at party goers is not avant-garde DHing! Oh no. You lost- oh. No, I lost- <sighs> We both lost three creativity for not understanding art at all. Aww. Uh oh. Pepsi. You stole it from me. Yeah. Uh. Nerds. Pepsi, Nerds, and Taco Bell. I feel like the Taco Bell brand TV show would be I kind feel of... like Taco Bell will make a TV show eventually. Probably. They made a hotel. What about Pepsi? Pepsi does have a show. Really? Yeah, it's like a weird game show. Okay. I watched a YouTube video about it. It's like a really weird game show that's like sponsored by Pepsi. It's very <laughs> strange. That's cool. Let's do this! Okay. And no creativity points because that's the shop. Unless you go buy something at the shop. Oh. Well, great. Okay. Um, None of us are getting a date What are time. all of these places? Gym. You can here. hover over that and it shows... What they all do. The little icons. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Except that the auditorium is the shop this time, because Tammy is there. Oh. Or Veronica. Her name's Veronica. Where did Tammy come from? <laughs> I guess I'll keep going for smarts. <laughs> mm. On YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. No, you can. Afterwards, Miranda beckons you from a darkened corner. Psst. Co-conspirator, over here. Phase one of Operation Make Liam Popular Again was an overwhelming success. Liam is internet popular. Now we just need to make him real life popular. And what better way than by making him prom king? I thought that said milking him. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I asked him to run for prom king, he said, and I quote, Never, 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 not in a hundred years, and that's not an exaggeration, because I've been live for hundreds of years, and I've never run for prom king, so there you go. <laughs> Which is clearly his cryptic way of saying he wants us to make him prom queen. Prom queen. 
My first thought was to murder the current prom king after establishing Liam as his rightful heir, but I couldn't find any bloodline char charts to work from. <laughs> so I suppose we must engage in this democratic election this school is holding. Now, how can we secure a win for Liam when he is opposed to running or making any effort to win? That's a great idea. You look just like him. You squeeze into some skinny jeans, some suspenders, and a lot of purple paint in a sense of smug superiority and gather a crowd in the auditorium. Man, Liam reminds me of my first high school crush. <laughs> Ladies and gentle monsters, you say. For too long, our school's been ru ruled by prom kings who care about things. Caring about things makes you weak because what if you care about the wrong things? I, Liam de Lioncourt, will never be wrong because I don't care about anything. I don't care about my dumb clothes or my stupid man bun or any of you. To be honest, I don't even care if I win. If I don't, I'll just blow up the school with the hydrogen bomb I buried under the cafeteria. You walk off stage to thunderous, terrified applause. You don't know whether it was for the speech or the threat of extinction, but Liam wins by a landslide. Drats and curses. Rumor says I will be elected prong king in spite of my sincerest wishes. <laughs> How horrible to have the love of the entire student body showered upon me. The cold blackness in my soul, he which has so long sheltered me from my true emotions. God, it's thawing. <laughs> this is terrible, and I am in no way enjoying it. He bless you. <laughs> Still, I should probably pick out a tuxedo, you know, so as not to appear ungracious. You're happy to help Liam pick out a tuxedo. We even help measure his body. You gain one fun- or two fun and one creativity. Ooh, I get to measure his body. Ooh. Luke, where do you want to go? Bathroom? Yeah. I have to piss. No, you have to <laughs> shit. You have IBS. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I already read this. The Oni girl. Yeah, she gave me an energy drink. Polly's there, dude. Oh, hi, Polly. She said hi back. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking so good today. It's like a crime and I should be arrested. But I can't post any of these devastating selfies yet. They're missing the most important ingredient. That's right, a killer selfie sticker. <laughs> and I've got so many, they're all so good. Which one should I use? Uh, <laughs> it's lucky. Or I think another picture of your face. Oh my god, yes! Two faces is twice as nice. And the second face will keep people from getting too frisky with the first face because there's witnesses! <laughs> or else they'll get more frisky because it's like a threesome in selfie form. Oh my god, a selfie with my own with myself sounds amazing. Can you make this happen? Can you clone a ghost? Can you clone me so I can bang myself? <laughs> Turns out that you cannot do that, but you two have a lot of fun trying. You gain two fun and one charm. Cool. All right. Oh my god, I need creativity! I don't have money! What else do I need? It was creativity and charm? Yeah, I guess I'll I do basketball. So. Basketball! I'm a natural born leader. Oh, good for you. Zoe! Zoe! <sighs> With a big grin on the amalgam of night chaotic nightmares that she has used to form her face. It's adorable. <laughs> Vic, hey, guess what? My latest comic, Who Watches the Watchmen Have Sex, just got published in Weird Tales magazine. I worked so hard on it, and it's finally out there in the world. Nothing can ruin this moment for me. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Anytime I do something good. <laughs> Leonard, come on! Why do you always have to slide into my DMs? Delighted moods. <laughs> because I must shed light on injustice wherever it arises. What about world hunger, global warming, income inequality, human trafficking? You didn't let me finish. I must shed light on injustice wherever it arises in the world of fandom specifically. Oh, cool. Social justice warriors win again. <laughs> oh my god! It is not cool, Zoe. It is not cool that publishing houses are showering attention on marginalized authors just because inclusivity is hot right now. I mean, look at you. You've got it all. You're purple. You're allegedly a woman. <laughs> you come from a, That's my gender. Allegedly a woman. <laughs> you come from a hideous dimension beyond mortal comprehension. Any magazine would die to be able to appreciate- to associate you with its brand. 
It's all a shadow marketing stunt. And what's worse, it's distracting from the real injustice from t <laughs> that your liberal media is too scared to discuss. <laughs> what about the artists who aren't part of some cool, sexy, under <laughs> underrepresented minority? What about us? Who are we supposed to get to recognize? Hmm. If I was to entertain all the BS you just said, I'd say, I don't know, maybe through a combination of talent and the numerous connections and avenues you have available to you as a privileged member of, so of society. Don't you use the P word around me, Mishy. If I'm so privileged, then how come my comic zombie slush on Fuck Island still has just to be public? Because <laughs> you spend all your time complaining about non-existent obstacles instead of getting better at art? Hmm, perhaps you have a point. Mm -hmm. Oh no, wait, I forgot you were a girl. This can't possibly be my fault. It's much more likely that the entire industry is biased against me. <sighs> Looks like there's only one way to solve this. You're way ahead of her. You select the only option that makes sense. For years you've possessed the gem of Garato, a powerful artifact cap capable of ri raising four people from the dead. Why not resurrect four great artists and their ask their opinions? Or use the Calcraft sorting hat to determine the objective value of the two comics. Well, I have bad stats and everything, sure. <laughs> I'm not creative. Oh, Good no. thing you stole this powerful artifact from California's old starts college. They have to sort their, student, their students by throwing darts at a board now, but honestly, it works about the same. <laughs> you gently place the hat on Zoe's comic, but nothing happens. Hmm, there seems to be a note safety pin to the back. What's to say? Please insert all this money per year to be sorted. What? Who knows? Who in the Nine Planes of the Torment can afford that kind of tuition? <laughs> People who are already rich, like my stepdad. Excuse me, I'll buy a self assorting. Three hours and a ridiculous amount of money later, the hat springs to life and spits a rhyme about Leonard's comic. You've clearly got some talent in you, and sort more money to continue. <laughs> she, I'm the greatest, and it's because of me and not my privilege. Boring. Well, this is depressing, and I used to get drinks with the actual physical manifestation of depression itself. I'm out of here. With Zoe gone, there's nothing left to do but watch Leonard bump, dump money into a hat you stole. Lose fun and boldness. Oh my god. I have no fun and no money. Uh, oh god. More songs. Um, uh, what's the last song I listened to? Teenagers by My Chemical Romance. And you're just picking My Chemical Romance songs. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Trouble by Coldplay. Uh. Total Insecurity from the FNAF Security Breach fan songs. <laughs> How inadequate it would be for the song to start playing at your funeral. Oh, I oh. think Total Insecurity would be very good at, your, at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the other two songs. I think that Teenagers would be great at my funeral, and I really want it to play. Yeah, yours is probably better than mine. I'm gonna go second, and you can go first. Sure. Okay. <laughs> My song is completely neutral. Lunchtime. All of us are failing. <laughs> yeah. Where are you sitting? Mm, my man's sitting up there. Are you sure you don't want to sit with Leonard? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You find Liam taking a picture of his food and Scott taking a picture of also Liam's food? Huh, <laughs> yes. Scott, snap away. My artistic plating, plating is too magnificent. I can't talk today. Too magnificent to ignore. What? Artistic what? I'm playing Pokemon Go. The Pokemans Go, the mobile version of the hit Pocket Humans video game. <laughs> what do Pocket Mans have to do with my food pick? There's a level 43 Bernard Henson <laughs> hanging out in the middle of your plate. Here, take a look. Scott, why does your phone show a tiny human doing pottery on top of my eggplant ravioli? You mean you don't know Bernard Henson? He used to be a chattered, chartered accountant, but now he's decided to pursue his dream of being a world-famous potter. That's major life change has made him a super rare. Pocket humans almost never follow their dreams. Well, I don't care how rare he is. His presence is spoiling my pristine food pit. Spoiling it? But pocket humans are way cooler than a boring old food pick. You take that back. Uh-oh, tempers are running a little high. Looks like it's up to you to settle this dispute. 
Scott's right, Liam. Why take a normal cliched food pick when you could take a food pick of Scott capturing a Pokemon off your food pick? Or, Scott, look over there. There's a Stuart Hogarth on top of that pile of mashed potatoes. You could just say, Scott, look over there. It's a butt, and he'll go. <laughs> Stuart Hogarth, the strongest accountant type Pokemon in the game? <laughs> what is what that? does it even mean to be a strong accountant? Is he like really good at math? No, he's just super buff, the buffest accountant! I've gotta have him! <laughs> Scott bounds across the cafeteria and practically dives into Gary Gremlin's smash mashed potatoes looking for a Pokemon to capture. Do you think he actually knows how to play Pokemon to go? Or do you think he just likes diving into people's food? The two of you debate the question while you help Liam line up the perfect food pick. Later, he lines up some very hot picks of you! Ooh! Ooh. Zoe! You walk up to see Damien closely inspecting Zoe's body. Oh, I should have let you talk to Damien. I'm just going for Polly, because she's the only one that's talking to okay. me. Okay. <laughs> Not like that, you pervert. Put that mouth <laughs> <laughs> What that mouth do? Okay, that sounds bad, but wait for it. Oh, that one? That one's for eating whole life birds. <laughs> and that one? <laughs> Crushing up tiny little bird bones that the other mouth spits out. And what about this mouth over here? That's for screaming obscenities undetectable to human ears. <laughs> and what about this one? That one's for... I don't actually know. I don't think I've ever noticed that mouth before. <laughs> I've had so many forms throughout the years. Unknowable Void, Eldritch Deity, Totem Being Sold by Young Cat Girl, Gelatinous Monster. And now you've got this sick new mouth that we gotta decide a function for. We? I'm not just gonna take suggestions. Actually, no wait, that sounds awesome. I will now take suggestions for what to do with this mouth. Time to come up with a brilliant mouth use that will clearly impress one of these charismatic and dateable classmates. Mm. Uh, a big kissing mouth. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> you read my spooky high seas pirate AU. <laughs> oh my god! That's almost the exact line that Murr Scott uses on Sea Snake Tentacled Crack and Vera. That's what you were refer referencing, right? Yes, absolutely. Sure, totally. Why not? I only like your fix where I beat the beat someone to a pulp for the sake of sheer violence. None of that her ex comfort bullshit. Everyone's a critic, huh, Damien? Anyway, fit. Tell me more about all your favorite lines and plot twists for my fan fiction. And list your 10 favorite posi positive adjectives for describing my writing style in Grasswell Romance. It's always me. <laughs> Brilliant, witty, sparkling, thundering, raining, smart, compelling, orange, ta talented, and triangular. You instantly respond. Yeah, triangular. Orange. Apparently it's a good answer because Zoe takes her regular mouth and kisses you on the cheek! Aww. It's not an entire mouth dedicated to kissing you. Not yet, at least, but it's a start. Um, sure. Hi, Polly. Polly and Miranda sit together, surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd of serfs. Huh? So, wait, you've actually got serfs who eat for you? Uh, disgraceful. Well, of course, I find eating to be terribly undignified, so I almost never do it. <laughs> Me neither. What other kinds of crazy serfs have you got? Well, I have a serf to go to the bathroom for me, a serf to experience difficult emotions for me, and a serf for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. I even have a surfing surf for standing on top of whenever... Oh, for standing on top of whenever I go surfing. Wow, that's a lot of surfs. It's a fair amount. The only limit is my imagination. Unfortunately, my imagination self-imagined a way to escape from surfdom, so now I'm all out of <laughs> ideas. Well, I'm sure with the help of Lou Lucas, we could probably think of a dope new kind of surf. Oh, is that so? I can't wait. A surf that does drugs for her. That's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> You should get a puppy surf. It's not actually surf. It's just like 50 cute dogs. You should get a party surf, Polly. A surf to experience your hangovers for you. A surf for me? I couldn't possibly. Why not? I do it all the time. But isn't it wrong to make someone else experience the negative consequences of your actions? Well, like I said, I do it all the time. And father says I can do no wrong, therefore it's probably fine. Okay, hell yeah. Let's hire a dude to deal with all my withdrawal symptoms. Hire? Polly, dearest, we don't pay our serves. We don't? Sweet deal! Polly hires the burliest hangover surf she can find, and the two of you go out for a night of your lives. The surf is dead in the morning from the happy <laughs> hangover, but the, <laughs> but the memories are well worth the second degree mid Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> the surf is dead! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm 
Choose an activity. Fucking. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> okay, I choose fucking, and you choose fucking. I choose Perfect. getting a water bottle, because I've drank, like, no water today, and I'm gonna get one. Okay. okay. How bullshitish would it be if a pseudo health magazine posted <laughs> doing this activity every morning would make you leave? <laughs> what? How bullshitish it would be. <laughs> Getting a bottle of water? <laughs> okay, that uh, wouldn't be bullshit, so you're going last. Realistic. Now, fucking versus fucking. I feel like it would be less bullshit if they said fucking. Okay. I'm sorry if you're. Um, if you can't sure. use it. It's okay. Wait, boldness or fun? I'll fun. Oh yeah. You spot Juan, the magical, the small magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad because he's so worried that people are used to calling him Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Now everyone defines him by only his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. <laughs> he's more than that. You don't see him in such simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different Juans in this school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Pro Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You gain plus two fun. Oh my god, did you hear? They finally invented a tattoo gun that works on ghosts. Ooh. I'm totally gonna get one as soon as the school lets out. Oh shit, we should definitely get matching tattoos. You wanna? Oh my god, you do this with Damien Ooh. too, don't you? Yes. Of course you do. What are you, responsible? <laughs> the important question is, what kind of tattoo do you want to get? Sorry, right, Texas, that goes out on You be first out and always second out. No tats. You get party, party par, and I'll get type of arty. Put our knuckles together, you know what that spells. SEX! <laughs> <laughs> you look blankly at Polly. What? That's what it spells, right? I mean, I could be wrong. Whenever I see a group of letters, I always assume it either spells sex or LSD. Polly. And knuckle tattoo is obviously longer than three letters, so sex it is. <laughs> You start to explain that sex is the same length as LSD, but Polly presses a finger to your lips. Shh, my little dumplet. If you play dumplet? your card, if you play your cards right, I'll show you how long sex can really be. She does show you. Turns out it can be as long as you want if you just keep <laughs> adding an X to the end. I get two fun and one oh. creativity. Oh, oh we love that for you. Just keep adding X's. Oh god, I have to get creativity. Oh, they throw roses at me. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, convert. I have to see if this could translate to something a bit more useful. Seven roses equals two creativity points. You're rehearsing for the cult and I, and are super psyched for your big number, Shall We Dance, in worship of the unholy lords. But you can tell Zoe isn't really feeling it. Sorry, Vic, I just want to get this right, you know? I mean, plays are just the fan fiction of the theater. <laughs> sure. I just don't know how to get into the mind of a cultist. Well, actually, I used to literally get into the minds of cultists all the time, but that was because back then I ate their minds and fed off their insanity. But that doesn't mean I got to know and understand them. It just means that we were delicious snacks. I've always been the culty, never the, the cultist. Maybe that's what slithered down my mom's throat that one time she went to an <laughs> intervention team. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Polly? Not Paul. Their name's not Paul. Zoe? Zoe. Zoe. Plus, some of that was, like, millennia ago. I'm sure cults have evolved since then. Nope. <laughs> no, not really. You know what? Screw it. If I'm ever gonna win an Entrelet Pixie Award or Trolley, I'm gonna need to go full method. What's the best way to simulate an actual cultist experience? Join a cult. <laughs> Meet my mom. Join in on the modern, less murdery, more culturally acceptable version of a cult. Gross fit. Gross fit. Start playing this free-to-play, pay-to-win uh, mobile game at which you can only succeed by playing 12 hours a day, tricking all your friends into joining or sacrificing a goat. Well, I don't have money, so I'm assuming that this is gonna maybe do money, so... Oh, I'm so smart. Of course, nothing screams cult like weight loss programs. I've had a friend who got sucked into that sky body pyramid scheme so that you look great at flying. You and Zoe head off to see what all the fuss is about at Gross Fit. 
Immediately, you're greeted by a perfect cockatrice, a perky cockatrice and a patterned yogurt pants. Oh man, all these people have the same vacant smiles and are sprouting the same basic phrases. This is gonna be culty as hell heck. All right, says the cockatrice as this class settles down. Let's start with a nice stretch to get those muscles all warmed up. <laughs> Everyone's doing it at the same time when she tells them. Like a cult, right? Get it? Gross fits a cult. Now let's get ready to work with weights, uneven bars, megaphones, and treadmills. Now pull out your ceremonial daggers and cut off your twelfth toe and swallow it the whole while keeping one eye open and reciting your deepest fears. Wait, what? Feel the power of the darkness consume your soul, but you you are but a vessel for the world, and the world is a vessel for your flesh and mind to dissolve into the vessel of the word. Oh man, I did not realize you meant that gross fit was literally actually a cult. This is awesome. I totally get it now. No wonder people had so much fun destroying their minds, bodies, and souls in the cult of Zagord for so many years. I finally understand. I'm going to completely nail this role in the cult and I. And probably go on to star in a cultist line, cultist on the roof, and spring awakening. You wonder if the joke about the enthusiasm in the spring awakening fandom is going to be too niche, but fuck it, there's been way more obscure references in theater nerds hard people too. So he seems pleased and poisoned as punch. Oh, pleased as poison punch. And you gain two creativity and one fun. Let's do this! Okay, Alita. Okay, where does where does what's his face hang out besides school? I feel like he I will show up school. anywhere if oh, he has yeah. the game has decided that you are romancing him. So oh. what stats do you need in order to What do you think you need in order for him to love you? Does he like boldness? Uh, I'll look it up. Yeah. I think it's is it creativity? I think it might have been creativity. Yeah, it was smarts and creativity. Okay. And you can't go there. Damn it! Oh, ah! Oh, you can buy something from the shop! Except it's not open anyway. Oh. That day you're the first one in class. You sometimes come early because you enjoy talking to the teacher. Wow, I'm a nerd. Huh? He's a bit bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and the two of you discuss life and stuff in every snarky way. Look at you, excelling at cliche movie tropes. You gain two smarts and one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. I'm sorry that I have... <laughs> Thwarted your plan. Oh, it's okay. Oh, that cute outfit! Well done, co conspirator. Operation Make Liam popular again is a rousing success. And for the record, I did discover that Liam was popular for a three month period in the early 16th century, so the name fits. All that remains for us is to wait for prom and celebrate our. Your deception? I knew it was too good to be true. You idiosyncrasies are remarkable, but they aren't marketable. <laughs> This was all a cruel joke, wasn't it? I bet between two popular kids that they could make an outcast loser into the prom king. Well, guess what? The circus is over and this clown is climbing into his tiny car and going home. <laughs> <laughs> Along with like 12 other tiny clowns, <laughs> if the metaphor holds. Which it doesn't. It was a bad metaphor. Goodbye. Bye, no, Liam. Liam, I wasn't trying to be mean. I don't have a mean bone in my body. I don't even have bones. You might check that affirmation later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, fish sticks. If we don't do something to fix this, all our hard work and subterfuge will be for naught. But how can we make amends? Surely not with some sort of over-romantic gesture defying all logic. You tell Miranda not to worry. You've seen plenty of teen rom-coms. You know how this part goes. Oh, before he boards his plane. <laughs> Wait, how did you know Liam was about to board a plane? Are you stalking him? If you are, that's fine. Isn't that what all romantic comedies ever have taught us to do? True. Uh, anyway, you find Liam at the International Terminal at Spooky Airport, waiting in line to board. You pass through airport security by telling them you're there for a romantic gesture. Because <laughs> airport security might say no to terrorism, but they can't say no to love. <laughs> you're too late. I'm going to B Belarus. I don't know Belarus. <laughs> Where my calculations have been revealed that nobody likes me and I can go back to being unpopular. You grasp Liam's cold, dead hand in yours and with perfect sincerity tell him what he means to you. Nothing. <gasps> Holy crap. Jeez. Don't you see? You say, looking deep in his eyes. You don't need to flee to Belarus to be unpopular. Because you will always be unpopular in my heart, which is co coincidentally about the same shape as Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Mainly because I don't know what you're talking about, but if I don't understand it, that must mean... It's, it's hard. art. It's an art to me. Oh, how could I ever dream of leaving you behind? I love oh this my game! God. <laughs> All right, if it makes you happy, I'll return to Spooky High School and don don that heavy prom cr crown. But only because I know that no matter how popular I get, 
There will always be one person who thinks I'm only so-so. <laughs> oh, the people in the airport line clap and cheer, clearly not understanding anything you two just said to each other. Liam accompanies you back to school, and you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Also, you should visit a hospital, since your heart being the shape of Belarus can't mean anything good health-wise. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, who are you going with? I'll try to take Polly. Hi. Hi. You might have it. I might. I fucking might. might. Okay. You gonna ask fucking Liam? Liam? I yeah. Got his name for a second. Welcome to All right. Okay. Are you for real? Oh, that's very flattering. Oh, but no. I could never date you. You see, my favorite secret ship has ever has been Vic X bowl of cereal. Oh. Don't get me wrong, you're funny and sort of sexy, but what kind of person would I be if I destroyed my favorite ship ever? A monster, but like the bad hard kind. Pass. So hard pass. No no. Crossover episode with you and I. Damn, you're bad at interacting with people. Me. <laughs> we both wear yellow, Zoe! Oh. <laughs> Perfect ship. To repent for the sin of making such bad choices, you were forced to walk around the school in the nude, accompanied by a man who chanted shame over and over I'll bring a big bell. Classic. Um, sure. Hi. Uh, uh, prom night? Yes! yes! You seem like the kind of person who would have us both ending the night in the hospital. <laughs> and that's the kind of unnecessary danger I like in my afterlife. <laughs> Let's go, it's time to make some wild and poor life choices. <gasps> oh, I don't like that tire. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan. I like her dress, though. Still not wild enough for the likes of you. So close to dawn, you decide to keep partying by improving a, improvising a dope after party at an abandoned manor house. You party with a group of classmates for days. Over time, people came and left. Some even died from too much partying. At one point, one of the deities of partying hard appeared, summoned by the deaths of your peers, which turned out to be a sacrifice to him. He declared you his heralds and bestowed upon you supernatural rad party powers, like endless confetti, whatever that means. Then he joined you, and you all kept partying for another entire week, because that's how you roll. Let's do this! <gasps> Yo! Oh my god! <laughs> Liam and Lita. Prom royalty. We did! It was all our plan! We fought for love, and love won! Liam is popular again! Huzzah! <laughs> anyway... After all these years spent avoiding cliches, this doesn't feel as bad as I imagined. So Maybe doing a 180 degree turn from cliches is good, but embracing cliches is like making a 360 degree turn from them. So disruptive. At that moment, Miranda becomes distracted by some other wacky plan and leaves you with Liam mumbling to himself. Such a lovable dork. <laughs> Prom night arrives and the two of you decide to embrace all cliches from slow dancing to actually having fun. <gasps> After the coronation, Liam admits he's having a great time, which is causing him to reflect on all the cliches he avoided all these years, which he could now embrace. He looks so happy. He puts his hands over yours and says, and you know what the biggest cliche I've been avoiding is? Love, and I don't even care how cheesy that sounded. Aww. Boy, that was cheesy, and you know what? You don't care either. Best at, at actually being... learning something in school. Best, Best at, at being, being purple. purple. <laughs> We got a secret ending! Yeah. Oh my Whoa. god! I think that was the prom one. The mm -hmm. prom king one. Oh, there's so many people. Oh god. Uh, <sighs> Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs momentogram filters. Polly graduated from doing lots of Iahusica and now yeah. she appears to be hallu- to she appears to hallucinating people and acts as their spirit animal. So his many years of researching obscure trivia for her steamy fanfics paid off. She got a job as a consultant at a company who makes fantastic fantasy sex toys based on beloved pop culture characters. <laughs> now she rakes in the big bucks, desi designing blueprints of stuff like the cock of the Demogorgon or the vagina of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> All right. Send pics. <laughs> uh. Oh, and now the credits. Oh, Veronica looks great. 
Brian Ooh. design early concept. Brian design early concept. Vicky Brian events concepts. Ooh. Oh god! Your boyfriend. Oh god. <laughs> There's no more of these, right? Oh. Oh. Oh god. Dimitri. We gotta look into Dimitri later okay yeah. we're gonna do something else yeah. i think i'm gonna uh, stop the stream and we're gonna do something else and then we might start again whenever artemis gets I, here yeah i was like i think maybe we should because there's nobody I don't yeah 